Say hello to the robots, and robot number one is starting to the top left of the map for team MVP, the man with a swag, Killer, aka MVP Swagger. He's trying to say to Yu-Gi-Oh, baby, bye-bye. He's trying to do that. It's gonna be, I gonna kill you. The bottom right of the map, we have robot number two. It is for Root Gaming. Hogging strong today, but can he defeat Swagger? It is Root Gaming Yu-Gi-Oh. When I asked him about Yu-Gi-Oh, he told me he never watched the show, read the manga, or played the card game. He just chose the name. No joke. The one thing that I will never forget is the last time that we saw Team Slayers play and Yu-Gi-Oh was playing and he looked pissed. Yeah. He was so angry. He suddenly turned into a monster. It was crazy to watch him. He went into the booth and you could really see like the killer instinct in his eye and he took down opponent after opponent and everyone just thought, buddy, if you would have played like this a few months ago, Slayers would have taken title after title and you would have had your, your outbreak, your the time in the limelight long before that. But Yu-Gi-Oh! right now playing for Root. He's fighting in WCS Korea. He was he didn't take the, the easy job. He didn't go to NA or to Europe. He was he's fighting in the strongest on the strongest continent on the strongest server that we have in Star in the Star StarCraft 2 universe. And yeah. so far he's making a really good job. You know, none of these guys, any of the people we have looked at who are coming up from Kode who qualified this season, none of them took the easy way out. Yeah. They're it all they're all trying to be the best players in the world. I feel for Yu-Gi-Oh though, it was like so easy. You know, with him playing for Root Gaming, he could have always gone to the air, stay at Cat's Place or somewhere else, waited for the Root Gaming house to be and set up and then stay there. So for a lot of the Koreans, they actually thought about it, of doing it, but he was one of the guys who said like, no, I'm gonna pull this off. He won the qualifier, he's now currently still in Code A, but this game could change his fate. He could go straight to Code S. He has the overlord now in position, he sees the forge, he knows about the opening, and this time his triple hatch opening here is gonna be much safer than it was against Kraid and Jungle. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this time on the two-player map, he gets a scout earlier, commits to the hatch, these Zerglings are, of course, just going to camp at the front. Not going to be able to see anything except whether or not plus one's being researched. He can't get into the main base. Not with two Zerglings. And he tries. And the cannon is misplaced. Well, it's, I'm not to say it's misplaced, but with the wild that he chooses here, the Lynx can actually just camp out for a little bit on the inside. He could actually just move the Overlord. Yeah, well, the Overlord is already too far gone. He could have moved the Overlord in range, take two shots, and then move the Zerglings and move it back. But that it was already been too, so smart. It would have been. It was too far to the left side already. And with two Zerglings, you might get a lucky probe kill. You might, but only if your opponent messes up. Having one Ling in the main base is already enough to uh, scout. Yeah, it's it's just annoying. This is not going to be a game changer necessarily, yeah. but as you can see, it's already denying two probes mining, what which is even better than killing one. What Yu Gi Oh is playing right now is this one mi uh, macro training map that you have where you have to keep the probe alive. Yes, and I used to play that game all the time. Yeah, he has to keep the Zergling alive now, so he's just trying to run away, build up his main base tech, and just making sure that he keeps it alive long enough so that the core is going to finish for Swagger, and Swagger has to decide what kind of tech he's going. The Zergling has 0.14 more movement speed than a probe, so as long as he continues to run it, the Lings will never, or the uh, probes will never catch him. Um, so that's just that's just the reality of it. That's the physics of it. And now he's just going to show the Stargate. He has no choice. <laughs> this is kind of the theme that we had in every single Swagger game today so far. Every single time he had to show his Stargate, even when he tries to hide it, he's like, ah. <laughs> Man, it's his swag, dude. I think he's gonna he's gonna come out of the booth if he gets into the OSL. This celebration is to like open his shirt and he's got like a gold chance hanging. The emblem is just a Stargate. <laughs> he just walks out. He's like, check out my swag. <laughs> the thing is, I could actually see him doing that. He's the type to go to clubs like all the time, and him having like a gold chain with a huge Stargate yeah. there. That is definitely something that I could see him pull off. He's like, girls love it when I chrono boost it. It like starts <laughs> glowing and shining. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. This is no longer a Stargate opening, it's a Swaggate opening from Killer here. <laughs> Dropping the Swaggate once again right in front of his opponent's scout. Oh, this is... I, I love it. Uh, the stories that are made in this group. As it is though, we have now the extra gateways being built. And once again, Yu-Gi-Oh! is going straight for the Burrow here. And with Burrow, he can do a lot against aggression early on in the game, especially when there is no kind of, uh, of scouting. And it doesn't really look like we're gonna see a lot of scouting. We have a Phoenix commitment, no oracles. 
So it's not like he's gonna have Envision ready, he's not gonna have an Observer. Burrow is going to help Yu-Gi-Oh! a lot against Aggression early on, especially once he has all those Roaches out that he's going for now. He needs 60 in-game seconds to finish the Burrow, and that's longer than it's gonna take plus one to finish, and almost as long as it's gonna take Warp Gate to finish. So Burrow is basically gonna be ready a yeah. few seconds after the attack hits, if even that, and all he has to do is micro correctly against that with with the roaches that he will start very soon. He starts spores also to be safe, not cutting any corners here. Yu-Gi-Oh having a great advantage as far as builders go right now. It looks good. He also has a really good creep spread at this point in time. He's really making sure that he has the creep ready for everything and anything. We have him with all the roaches that he needs against this. Swagger has to be very careful. I feel it's much too easy for him to overcommit and hang himself here. Yeah. He is going to kill one of Yu-Gi-Oh's overlords, which will actually supply block Yu-Gi-Oh. He doesn't have any overlords queued up right now, and he just got his larva, so he's going to he's gonna need some time here. I feel that he has enough, though, with Burrow. Burrow is his biggest asset right now. He just needs to do good Burrow, Marco. Every time the Roach is about to die, he needs to pick it up. But Swagger is doing the same thing. He's picking up the weakened Roaches and making sure they die very quickly. And that's a bit of an issue. That's definitely a problem. But now we have those additional overlords being um, built. And he's still doing a great job here, building once again another forward spore crawler to deal with this. Yeah, and, and he's, he's making the spire right yeah. now, but that's how confident he is. Swagger is already realizing that this is not going to happen, that he won't be able to do too much damage here. He does a bit, but he's not trying to take down this third right away. He's already building probes behind it. But Yu-Gi-Oh, he's looking really strong here. The guy is on lair tech, he's going into uh, the Hydra Den, he's going into the Spire. We have him with all the upgrades that he needs, taking down the pylon to the right side. Not taking too many... Uh, yeah, the too many losses against his early aggression. Playing really strong so far. Yeah, Swagger gonna lose his fourth pound, which will supply block him. As you can see, he's at 84 of 84. He even falls down to the 76 now. And uh, he saw the Spire. But I almost wonder if this is just going to be straight up for Corruptors first. He could go into Corruptors, uh, you know, not like he did in the <laughs> uh, Zerg versus Terran game, but very differently. Just use them to deny the Phoenixes and also deal with the Colossi for his Hydras. Phoenix is still trying to be aggressive here and sniping one or two drones every now and then when they are able to get into a good position, taking those hits from the spore crawler, but not dying to them, of course. But as we speak, we have another uh, another hatch now being built for Yu-Gi-Oh! completed, going to be his macro hatch, so lava shouldn't be an issue later on. And what Swagger really tries to find out is when is the fourth base going down for yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh! Right now, Yu-Gi-Oh! Is, is foregoing using the spire at all. Starts just a few more hydras and roaches. He could, you know, with the gas he has here, he could actually go into Mutalis uh, if he scouts his opponents really committing to that robotics tech. I feel if he's going for this, he's gonna do it a little bit later. He commits to a few Hydralisks first. That could help him against those Phoenixes that we have. And if you are going to switch into, uh, if you're really going to switch into uh, Mutalisks, what you want to do is make a lot of them. Eight alone, that's not going to help you, especially when there are already a few Phoenixes on the map. Yeah. It's going to be way too easy for the Protoss player then to switch into additional ones. That's why he gets the Corruptors first here, to be able to help defend against the Phoenixes. And also, for Colossi coming out later as well. Two more coming out, Corruptors, that is. Yeah. Delaying the Nexus here at the third a little bit. By the with one uh, broad zergling, so that already helped him. He comes infestation pit for the hive deck, and he can of course also decide to later on once again at those swarm hosts that we've seen in the game against Creator. Six, Six additional sheets. gateways. Uh, you know, this is not the type of swag you want to show. Uh, you want to show somebody here. This is the one you want to keep hidden until just the right moment. But we are going to see swarm hosts. Yeah. And I like this decision a lot with what we've seen uh, yeah, Swagger currently build. If he is uh, being aggressive here, that is going to help um, him a lot, Yu-Gi-Oh! that is. And also on a map like, what I really want to see here is him position those Swarmos in the middle of the map. Oh, nice attempt to snipe here, the Mother Shikoni gets it! Yep, doesn't but if, even lose anything to do it. If he gets those, if he gets, whoa, ele whoa. 11 swarm hosts right off the bat. If he positions them in the middle of the map with the uh, Enduring Locust upgrade, he could already take down those rocks at the third and even move in on, uh, to the wall. Yeah. the wall. He's already got his creep spread so far out there too, and he's not stopping for a second. And what have we seen against Creator? He committed a lot to spores and spines. He can do that in this game too. He's already spreading the creep forward, so there's nothing hydras. to stop him. He has Hydras, and as long as he has the spores or Overseers to detect, he can kill Observers. Yep. Uh, oh, he should kill that Hydra, there he goes. <laughs> that Hydra was a bit overzealous for that attack. Okay. I'll handle it. <laughs> no, you won't, Hydra. Just just stop. How many drones does he have now, Yu-Gi-Oh? Going into Hive and double upgrades, 86. He's definitely going to start building Spores and Spine. 
And we have him, uh, one of the things that is really interesting here, we've seen this in the past already, he didn't get a single upgrade. He rushed into, well, not really rushed, but he went straight into the uh, into the swarm host here without upgrades, getting the tech out first and then starting with the upgrades for the units. Yeah. Notice he has Zerglings Burrowed everywhere, so he has vision of everything. That's that's yeah. so cool. I mean, he's really utilizing the utility that Burrow has in Heart of the Storm. And here come those Locusts, already going to trade well, and Swagger has to make a choice. Is he going to try to break out now? This could be his only chance. I don't think that he's going to move in against this. There are too many Hydralisks, and also if you Roaches. We have the Corruptors in a great spot. Swagger at this point cannot break out just yet. He has three Colossi, but this is so much pressure now by Yu-Gi-Oh. I love this style, and with the Hive Tech, he will be able to get his Vipers out for the Abducts. Yeah. So far, the Locust's not doing a ton of damage, but buying a lot of time for him to get more Swarm us over here, get the better positioning with those Corruptors. He can He's also set, upgrades. He can set the next set over to the third base, for example. There are a lot of options that he now has. He's just barreling down at the front, though, trying to snipe maybe the Forge and even the Core. He's going for that Colossus here with his Corruptors. Corruptors moving in. He's trying to keep the Colossus count low. Once again, an attempted run by to the third base. And he, he damages the Colossi quite significantly. So now when the Locusts come in, he has to be even more careful with those. Yeah, 200 supply now for Yu-Gi-Oh! Trying to build up that bank. Here come those Locusts again. He could do a little bit more damage against the tech. I really would love him to to take down the structures instead of focusing on the units. Yeah, I think that would do, do a lot for him. He has plus one Carapace, but the Locusts don't have any damage upgrades just yet. Killer, on the other hand, nearly was plus yeah. three. Yu-Gi-Oh! is soon going to take another base. He's now heading into the spines and spores that we talked about with the additional lava, uh, sorry, drones that he has. But this is a lot of pressure. Swag has to be careful, but he has a lot of Colossi by now. Yes. And right now he's making, in fact, uh, his sixth Colossus. The Burrowed Zerglings doing so much here with the scouting for Yu-Gi-Oh! He sees now what kind of plan Swagger has trying to come in from the flank. And immediately the Swarm Hose hightail it out there. Yeah. He gets a Burrowed Zergling in there to deny the base. So well done. But Swagger has a very scary army. He's about to have plus three. He has an opportunity here, a very big one, to not only kill these units, but then go for a counterattack. I just don't think that the counter aggression will be successful against spines and spores that already have been built. But Yu-Gi-Oh! is going for this very dangerous composition of not only the Swarm Host, but the added Brood Lords. And once you have this composition, especially with 17 Corruptors already on the map, it's going to be very, very difficult and uh, so difficult to beat. Swagger has this this window. He's getting the Warp Prism out. He's going for Warp Prism yeah. speed. He wants to rally those across. He has plus three. Plus three armor is, in fact, starting for him as well. So he has double upgrades. and he. He has Even starting ball. shields here. Yeah, this death ball is is going in. And the question is, is he going to get a strike? Because he can't afford a spare right now. He's blinking very well, making sure that those stalkers don't take too many hits. But now he's losing time, and especially since Yu-Gi-Oh really was just just he was just showing an attempted run by, and this just shows Swagger that he doesn't have the time. More and more bases going down now for the Protoss player, but he's losing the time that he needs to make sure that the Root Lords won't be in the game. The double expand that we see is is crazy, considering uh, how much pressure you go put on. But this also indicates that Swagger wants to go into a late game. He's not actually going to try to to get hit that time. He's not going to try to stop him before Broodlords, but he needs to start transitioning. He's starting the Templar archives. He's going to want to to get some Tempest out as well against this. He can't just uh, deal the only Colossi. Still the triple upgrades here for Yu-Gi-Oh, and now the Great Aspire is done. He can go into the Broodlords, Broodlords and Swarm Hosts against his opponent's army here. Both of them are at 200 supply, uh, I am very close. Where are the Broodlords though? He has uh, DTs in his main base thanks to the Wall Prism here and a few Zealots too. He does not target the Greater Spire. Ooh, 15 Broodlords at a time. Yeah. Instantly, he's losing so many drones here, but you know, he has so many more left, he has 79 left. And the Spores and Spines buying him all the time, he needs to get those Broods out. Yeah. He cancelled three of them to get a bit of additional resources and also supply back. But now we have him maxed out where Swagger has at 195, whopping in another round of weapons here. At the third this time, but here come the Broodlords. They are moving out and immediately Swagger drops four Stargates. Guys, keep in mind, this is the all deciding match. One of those two players will advance together with Jungby to the Ozel. Yeah, great trades here by Swagger with his Zealots and the Dark Templar. He knows he has the resources to trade like this. And those upgrades just melt away the Zerglings. Yeah. 
He even has shields. Plus two shields on the way. Believe he gets started. Plus one for air. Swagger says, I want to play the late game here. He cannot possibly blink into the Broodlords. He cannot do this with all those Swarm Hosts specking them up with the Locust. New War Prism coming into the main base, and he's going to go for that Greater Spire this time. He's going to kill the Hatchery, meanwhile. Yeah, it's the Ninja War Prism. It sneaks past all those Corruptors, and it's once again in the base, and so far Yu-Gi-Oh! hasn't seen it. Yeah, he needs to use it right away. Now he goes in. Right now, two Zealots, two DTs. Zerglings are here. Are they going to be enough, though? That's the question. No, 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 no. He needs more, and there he sends in the rest of the reinforcements. We have one Sporkler, but that's also an Overseer. Yu-Gi-Oh! At the same time as he defends, he's going for the aggression, and Swagger is running out of money. He doesn't have minerals. He doesn't have gas. He's trying to make those four Stargates happen, but Yu-Gi-Oh! is pushing in, and he has some timing window here. Swagger needs to buy more time somehow. He needs to breathe. He's not able to kill the, the Greater Spire. He's not able to stop the aggression. He's not even really able to mine from that base he took to the bottom left. He's only just now saturating the base he took at the 9 o'clock. Yu-Gi-Oh! Popping another round of Locusts, moving forward with a Swarm Host, setting himself up into position. Here come the Broodlords, and this wall is going to be attacked and probably being taken down in just a few seconds. Goodbye, he has Forge. to be careful. Forge is gone. No blink forward with the Stalkers. He just can't. He's about to have a lot of Tempest, though, Ooh. and that Greater Spire is dead. I can't believe that he lost it with everything that he had in the main base, but is it even gonna matter? Now we have those Tempests out. What does he have against the Tempest? There's not a lot of ants here for Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah, he just has to hope uh, that he can push it back. He only has six Corruptors right now. To the left side of the map, the base is going down. Too many Roaches barreling down at that Nexus, an attempted warp, and maybe even saving it with the additional Photon Overcharge, but there are so many Roaches. It's just going to take so long for Killer to actually kill uh, these units with his Tempest, because yes, Tempests do a lot of damage, but there's so many Brewlords there right now. 11 Broodlords and 11 Swarmos, and killing all those is going to take time, especially when you're attacking Locusts. Spawning pool is being rebuilt, and the second Spire that Yu-Gi-Oh! built earlier really saves his ass here. He's already getting the Greater Spire, and he has now the chance to get those Corruptors out. He desperately needs them against those Tempests, but Yu-Gi-Oh! is not able to take down Swagger right away, and suddenly we have this great unit composition for the Protoss that could win him the game. Yeah, he has, he has some time here. And this is the first glimpse, by the way, that Yu-Gi-Oh! has the base that's over at the 8 o'clock Smash Shift. If he had known about that earlier, he would have killed it much, much faster. And this is actually one of the, the saving graces of Swagger here. He killed the, the Greater Spire, and also that he has this base to mine from. Otherwise, he would not be able to remax. Yu-Gi-Oh! is playing a very great game with those Swarm Wars, by the way. Always being mobile, always watching out for flanks, making sure that they are not caught off guard. But still, he is struggling here. Going into plus three, plus three, plus three. Every single upgrade in the book being researched by the Root Gaming Zerg player. But still, War Prisms have been his problem in this game. He sees it at the bottom left and he sends down those Corruptors. He's trying to intercept it, but the War Prism is a little bit too fast. And he needs to move back with the Corruptors to save the rest of his army. Exactly. You know, he's got to deal with the Tempest as well. Every single shot does just so much damage. Watch those, those hit points on those Corruptors just plummet. He and has not enough anti air wolf. Yeah, he, he's really struggling with that. He doesn't have infestors. He doesn't have vipers. He can't do any yanks. And this is a good run by though. Yeah, he's freeing up supply here. He's trying to trade as cost efficient as humanly possible with the roaches, and he will. But he needs to free up supply because the anti air that we currently have in the game for him is not enough to deal with this many tempests. Ben Killer so far is ignoring uh, those roaches. He just remaxes himself, and uh, you know he warps in some zealots here, just trading. Minerals, and now he's gonna go and takes out some more swarm hosts. Will he go for the blink? He does. The brood lord's a little bit exposed here. The swarm host needs a burrow. He's going for a bit of a stutter step here, and Killer realizes that the blink forward might have not been as such a great idea as he thought it would be. Even the locusts now coming into play. The roach is still doing damage here. Even Void Rays now being added, they are great against the Corruptors. And this is exactly what Swag what Yu Gi Oh is going for now. Corruptors everywhere. Yeah, Corruptors, more Corruptors. But Void Rays are good against Corruptors. It's, it's if he's already seen the future, he knows what, what's coming next. The last of these roaches now taken <laughs> out. Yukio is he's, he's starting to deplete some of his bank. Five Stargates in total. More and more Swarmos are now being added, trying to win the battle on the ground against his opponent. Spines and spores, the upgrades coming in, but now finally starting to add also upgrades for the air units. That immortal was so sad. He's like, well, I know I'm not useful for you anymore, Swagger. Is like, can't we just be friends? It's like, no. before I sacrifice myself, I will give you my chain. Fire. Well, you know, you can see Swagger is actually starting to build a better bank here. He has these two bases running to the left side of the map. Yu-Gi-Oh! not being able to secure any bases. 
He knows that if a warp prism finds him, uh, he's gonna lose the base instantly, or a group of stalkers like this one. This is such a crazy last game that we have in this group. Here come those stalkers, and here go those stalkers. He's gonna blink away again. One stalker will get down for sure. Yeah. Veni, Vidi, Pipi. Sie kamen, sie sahen und sie machten sich Angst in die Hose. Well. That observer was pretty pretty dead there. Uh, and those stalkers are also going to be really dead if they are still in cooldown and can't escape from those broodlings. He's just trying to keep Yu-Gi-Oh back with his broodlords so he can fight this army without the broodlords. The broodlords are distracted by the stalkers. The corruptors here are captured. He can't yeah. fight against this firepower. We were talking about the ultimate composition for Yu-Gi-Oh, but right now Swagger is actually building up that ultimate Protoss composition. He has Tempest, he has Colossi, we have Storm, we have Feedback, we have Void Rays. And he has everything that he needs to make this happen. This could be such a long and drawn out game at this point. I, I wonder why we don't see any investors. It's just a few investors could help him, you know, it could be the world for him. He doesn't really have the resources anymore. You know, he never took the base to the top right. He's limited to the four bases that he has. I was mentioning earlier that they expected him to take a fifth base, but he never really did. Yeah, it's it's been kind of five versus four bases for most of this game. And Swagger now going into double cybernetic score. Uh, yeah. Because one is not swag enough. He wants to get those upgrades out. He wants to get all the upgrades that he can possibly get. He's already on 3-3 for the ground. He misses a few of the upgrades in uh, terms of shields, but that's it. Finally, the fifth base for Yu-Gi-Oh. He had a huge bank, a huge advantage in economy earlier on, but it's gone. Yeah, and, and he takes the base now, but it's way too late. And Swagger, if he finds it, he is going to kill it. Here comes the transition now into the Infestors. He wants to get the Neural Par uh, sorry, the uh, um, Pathogen Glance upgrade out here. But this composition for Swagger is just... It's amazing. Yeah, I mean, he just doesn't even care about the Locust. 138 army supply against 144. But the army composition is much better for Swagger. The one advantage that Yu-Gi-Oh has is all the free units, but it's just a matter of time at this point. Once again, Ling's trying to run by and take down the economy of Swagger, but he has so many bases right now. It's basically a split map scenario that we see at this point. One DT is going to be very, very annoying here. It's going to force him to send some overseers over. And he scouts the base as well. He could just try to kill drones with it. Uh, he's, yeah, he looks like that's what he's going to do. He's camping it. And Yu-Gi-Oh right now is Harvester count down to 59, uh, which when you're only really about to mine from one base is actually okay. Uh, Engaging that army is just so difficult for Yu-Gi-Oh. The Tempest, they zone out everything. The Storms come into play against Broodlings and Locusts. Sniped. He's going for DTs all over the map, sniping those bases, and losing the fifth is horrible for Yu-Gi-Oh. He's low in economy, he needs this space. Swagger is building up a bank that Yu-Gi-Oh just simply doesn't have, and the composition for the MVP Protoss is so good. There's it, nothing for the Void Race, you know? Yeah. He doesn't have anything to stop those. And they're about to have 1-1 one, one upgrades. It's not only the Void Race, it's also those Tempests. They zone out everything and protect not only the High Templars for the Storms, but also all the Colossi. So the three units, the, the Locusts and those Brood they can't do a lot. They just evaporate. They melt away against Storm and Colossi. Yeah, I mean, Corruptors and more and more and more Corruptors. Finally, the Infestors. But it's hard to use Infestors when you're out of resources. It's also hard to use Infestors against this many Templar. But, you know, the timing for Infestors is almost passed because you can just snipe those, especially when they're low numbers, with the Tempest. An attempt to take down the base in the bottom left with this Swarm host. He's moving in, but he's also exposing them. Yeah, and he will Swagger them all. is on the move to the bottom left. Immediately, Yu-Gi-Oh! is trying to move back home. He's only relying on this one set of Swarm Hosts, but now suddenly he's caught in the middle of the map, completely unguarded, trying to move back. He evaded the, uh, the charge of ability on the Void Rays, but he still can't fight this. He can't, he just doesn't have the numbers. He needs more and more Infestors for those he needs, fungals. He no, maybe no! He's he he got the fungal voids! He needs to split him now while he has the chance for but a the second tempests bubble. are there. The Tempests are already there, zoning out everything, moving in with the Storm, shielding the Void Race. Yeah, and now he just he, he gets another fungal here, but it's not enough. But he gets another one. He actually gets a lot of fungals, and now he's trying to come into it for him with those Corruptors trying to move in, baiting out that upgrade. Once again, another fungal hits home. He could actually pull he it off. He could. It's still getting closer and closer. Swagger decides to run home, but here come the investors. They're on the chase. The base at the bottom left is gone for Swagger. It was taken out by the few Swarmos that he sent over there after the army of the Protoss moved down, and another suddenly fungal! the Corruptor He gets the fungal. Yo! He gets the fungal once again. Fungal after fungal hitting home. Another one is good. 
and he's doing so much damage here. Here come the Corruptors. The Corruptors are on the Prowl and they're taking them down one by one. Corruption, Corruption being used. And oh. he needs a few more Infested Terrans perhaps here to finish this off. It looks like he can do it. 12, 12 Infestors are being built at the same time. The Corruptors are taking this army down. I cannot believe Yu-Gi-Oh is pulling this off. There's no splitting whatsoever from Swagger. He did not expect the Infestors and that's going to cost him this game oh. most likely here. God. And I cannot believe how he was able to always get close enough with those Infestors to make this happen. There were not enough feedbacks. He didn't have the Tempest in a position where he could snipe those Infestors before they got in range. This is horrible now for Swagger and Yu-Gi-Oh makes the best decision ever. He knows he is low on economy. He can't get another base up. This is all the money that he has. So what does he do? Going into energy units. Yeah. And I, I just don't see uh, uh, very many recovery options here for Swagger. He has no bank. He, he is going to stabilize with these bases for just a little while, and he's going right back into the Void Rays with a few more Tempests coming out, but... It's too this late. This game isn't over, but Yu-Gi-Oh! has now the momentum to just continue to deny the bases. Now he's I the one with the pants. I cannot believe that Yu-Gi-Oh! was able to pull that off. It was really a Swagger's mistake, but Yu-Gi-Oh! just getting those Chain Fungals off again and again, just always having the fungal ready, but you know, Swagger definitely should have pre-split his units. That was a huge the mistake. The thing is, you shouldn't be able to do that against feedback High Templars and Tempests out there. But yep. he had so many of them and he always got close enough and he shielded he those corruptors for he as long split. as he could. Here comes the split and the Void Rays, they could take down everything here. Taking down a few units, but the Infestors are a huge threat. And once again, the Fungals. He needs to get those Tempests in, or those Templars, excuse me, to get the Fungals off, or the Pea Packs. But he doesn't get them, and now he's suddenly starting to run out of energy. Once again, the Void Ray starting in, at least getting another shot off, and here comes the next number of Fungals. The Fungals are really good here. This is such a close game, 100 supply against 130. Once again, the Void Ray is coming in, the Corruptors trying to shield those Infestors. He's just gonna fungal get after bubble. Fungal, and he's pulling it off again. He's gonna, he's gonna win this game with this fight. If he wins this, he's won the game, and it looks like he's able to pull he's it off. All the it. Void Rays are down in the red. Another Fungal hits. Yu-Gi-Oh! is going to pull it off. He will advance to the OSL together with Zhang Bi. 55 supply against 140 on resources lost in this game. 42,000 for the Protoss player and 39,000 for Yu-Gi-Oh! Very close, but the Zerg player even a little bit more cost efficient than Swagger. Yeah. Killer, he, he did not split his units. Yu-Gi-Oh! with some great fungals, excellent control. And, I mean, these zealots are going to fade away, and so are Swagger's chances. He has nothing left he can do here. He's got no mining except one yeah. base. Yu-Gi-Oh! is mining again, and he is taking down the base at the bottom left of his opponent. He kills the last few Tempests, and he is sealing the deal here. Swagger is on his last leg, and Yu-Gi-Oh! is about to break it. He's trying his best to trade against the Zerglings, but eventually the production is going to be too much. Time warp not enough here either. And he doesn't have anything really set up at back Zero army supply. He doesn't have a single unit left except for probes. This is all that he has. He's trying to come to terms with his loss. The link's just going to go right into the main base. He didn't split. He did not split did his not units. Split. And Yu-Gi-Oh got the one. He got the miracle fungal that he needed. And he always kept on the pressure. Got his infesta after infesta close enough to his opponent's army. A last desperate round of warp-ins. But this is the last thing that Swagger can do in this game. Yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh makes more investors now, more lings, and Swagger. I think he's just trying to come to terms with the fact that that he's dead here. He he's was, mining. He was so in, in such a great position composition-wise. The investors either surprised him, or he was just looking at something else, did not split his units. You've got to have a split against investors with your void yeah. rays. That's that's it, just unforgivable. The army that he had was so sick, and uh, I can certainly uh, believe that he's currently looking at the game, and he must be frustrated with this. But Yu-Gi-Oh, that he bounced back into this match, incredible. And he is looking so strong. He was looking strong the entire day in each and every one of his matches. It was really a huge effort here by the Root Gaming Zerg player. And now he, the game is in his hands. He has mining at the top right. He has the much bigger army, 100 and 16 supply against 63. Most he's of this is zealots too, so we can yeah. just fungle them. They're not going to fight. He's playing it safe. Both of these players know that this is the most important game for them. This is the game that will allow one of them to go into Code S. And Yu-Gi-Oh! He knows that he has taken a huge, huge step forward, but he doesn't want to risk it. He doesn't want to take any chances here. He's just going to slowly remax and take more bases. He takes the base at the top right now. Um, that was kind of weird. He had his Zergling block there, and now it takes the, the real base. Um, 
But Swagger has a, a group of units that will just be fungled and destroyed. Yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh is looking at this, he, know, he says, okay, you have one base, you can mine from one base, but I have a much better army, you can try to build up your army, I will beat you, I have the better upgrades by now, I have the resources, but as soon as you try to take that base at the bottom left, I will be there, and I will make sure that you will never get it. Yeah, he just keeps saying that Overseer that's at the bottom left right now to make changelings to check. And the Investor Energy Count is getting nearly full. He doesn't have High Templar, he can't afford them to, to go in for the feedbacks on the Investors. And even if he had one High Templar that feedbacked four, Four investors, he would just have many more. He's moving in again, he sees what's going on here, and as soon as he sees an Nexus, he will move in. He's getting swarm host after swarm host. A lot of units here that he has that can spawn additional free ones. 12 in total so far, 11 investors. He has everything that he needs to take this game. 126 supply against 80. Only ground units here for Swagger. No area of effect except for the few Archons. Mostly Zealots that can be just instantly halted by a Fungal. They won't be able to move or fight anybody. The Locusts alone are going to give them a hard time. Yeah. I mean, Yukio's just got a massive army and it's the better composition. Yeah. He has free units, he has energy units. The army, the base at the bottom left has been started and Yu-Gi-Oh is immediately on the move. He sends those Locusts out first and he has a couple of units just making sure that they get into position. He will attempt to take this down. He's not gonna allow Swagger to take another base. Yeah, those links say no. And, I mean... Swagger just doesn't have anything he can really do to pressure. He's killing some tumors, but that's not going to get him back to this game. And now the trap is... Yu-Gi-Oh! is activating his trap card right now. He's trying to catch those units in the middle of the map. He already has a few to the top right. The spine crawler is doing their best here. The drones even fighting. He was catching more zealots that were heading back towards the bases to the left side. But even the bank now available to Yu-Gi-Oh! And he could use it any second. Yep. This is... I mean, just... Uh, that one void ray that Killer is making right now just, just looks so sad and lonely. Um, I I feel like Yu-Gi-Oh could definitely be using his swarm host a little bit, you know, more aggressively. But he's he's starting to do that now. He, he doesn't want to risk it. That's the only reason why he doesn't do it. He does not want to risk the win. He knows that he has this game and that he could lose it, but Swagger can't win it anymore. So he's playing it as passive and as cautious as he possibly can without allowing the base at the bottom left. Yeah. Colossus production has started again for Swagger, which is. You know, if if he had money, one way he could get back into this game. He just can't afford it. Colossi alone are not going to win him this game. He knows that there's not a lot of corruptors left, and there weren't very many Brewlords. Now Brewlords have been restarted. So he was, I guess, he's banking on the fact that maybe if it was only Lings and uh, investors, he could uh, take it. Talking about Lings, we have a lot of them heading everywhere, and that even catching the Colossus here. Uh, and now that the uh, here is going down, he had a few mineral patches left, he's losing the probes, he's losing everything. The few units that we have at the bottom left are taking down the last Void Ray to make sure that the, yeah, the Broodlords will be safe, but the Broodlord actually goes down. It doesn't matter he anymore though. He can just make more and continue the attack. Yeah. The bases are going down, we still have the bank for Yu-Gi-Oh. He's taking this game, moving the Zerglings now to the bottom left to attack this Nexus. Yep. He needs a little bit more time. But he will be ready soon. I feel if he just brought all of his swarm hosts here and started attacking the Nexus directly, which is now what he's doing. Oh yeah, he could he could just end it right now yeah. with the investor support. Here we go. He's gonna grab these zealots. We have all the information in the game, so we know what's going on here. Yu-Gi-Oh is just playing it safe, just in case. Now, exactly as you said earlier, those fungals will make sure that those zealots don't do anything at all, and this army is gonna evaporate. And so are the hopes of Killer to advance to Codes today. It is going to be Yu-Gi-Oh. He's dropping the infested. Terrans everywhere, infested marine dance for the root gaming player. He will participate in the OSL. Swagger with six supply left. That's one Colossus he has on the map. GG. Congratulations to Yu-Gi-Oh! Congratulations to Root Gaming. He did it. Goes to the OSL. And he joins Jangbi. What a game. What a crazy game. Killer can't believe what happened. He needed to split his Void Rays. You know, that's the primary reason he lost that game. He had the perfect Protoss army. If you would... If someone would tell you, okay, here, you have 200 supply, assemble the best army that you could possibly get, it would be this. Yeah. That was a, a really, really well thought out game by both players, but in the end, just good fungals yeah. by Yu-Gi-Oh! wins in the series. One misstep, a lot of patience once again for Yu-Gi-Oh! has shown it throughout the entire series today. And it helps him, it wins him the game, he gets the fungal, he keeps them up, gets the chain fungal, moves in with the Corruptus at the right point in time, takes the game and takes the second seat.
Really, really exciting series there. And Jongbi dominates the group. Really looking forward to seeing how he's going to do in the OSL. It's kind of his home ground. He was the final OSL winner, and now he could potentially do it again here. Yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh! and Jongbi, they advance. Swega, Creator, and Gumiho, they drop down and will participate in Code A next season. Yeah, Gumiho with a really bit of, a bit of a disappointing performance today, going 0-3, just like his teammate SC yesterday. Tomorrow we have the next round, of course. We have Group D, and we have then uh, Curious, we have Paralyzed, Super, Bian, and Effort. Yeah, really interesting group. That group is going to be sick. It's going to be awesome, and it's our final up and down group for the season. So the last two Premier League players will be decided, and everybody else will be in Kode. Yeah. Really great series that we had today, especially the last game, of course. That uh, was definitely worthy of one of those players advancing to uh, Code S. It was the final game for the day. And we are done with the group. We have a Protoss and a Zerg advancing to the next season of the OSL. So, uh, really great matches. Yeah, it was really, really good. By the way, remember to get a ticket for the season final so you can watch the four of us. Myself, Calor, of course, Tasteless, and Artosis. All of us will be casting here in the Gomsuyu, the finals. And if you want to come to the studio and watch live, if you're in Seoul, if you're planning to come to Seoul for this weekend for the finals, if you want to hear English commentary, this is the place to be. Exactly. We are done for the day, guys. We will be back tomorrow with the next round of the up and down matches. Make sure that you add the two of us on Twitter, at ProxyWolf, myself, at Caldor. We'll see you back tomorrow at 6.10 Korean Standard Time. See you then. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Four kids later down the line, my progression is my profession I'm doing shows with a nine, my mama's trying to kick in my sister, she doing fine And I'm making my way through life, no longer blinded Wait, a minor setback is posted